Today we are doing a follow up lecture to the furry lecture, the introductory furry lecture. We did touch on fursonas briefly, but I would like to do um, a sort of a follow up, a slightly more in depth, sort of a refresher. What is a fursona? From Wikipedia, personalized animal character created by someone in the furry fandom. Acting out one's fursona in person may involve wearing a fursuit. Uh, what is a fursuit? Sort of, sort of a diagram. We have the person. Fursona. The fursona used as a vehicle, kind of relating back to how uh, VTubers use avatars as a vehicle for a, a lot of things. You know, the, the Wikipedia entry says, um, perhaps role play or just 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 as just as a as an avatar you know the i i think maybe the role play is is varying in some degrees um could be both and um here there's a subsection the the branching off it's not a it's not a th uh, a full through um linear path i would say i think there's a branching where you can say a fursuit could possibly uh be involved to accomplish this. And this, I do think it is important to note is that the fursuit is optional, uh, sort of a basic layman's, a layman's understanding of fursonas. Person using an avatar or a representation of fursona to what means role play or to just use it as an avatar. And optionally, a fursuit could be used to accomplish or perhaps just enhance these goals. But what is a fursuit? Oh, okay, again, from Wikipedia, uh, fursuits are custom made animal costumes owned and worn by cosplayers and members of the furry fandom, commonly known as furries. Hey, what the hell? Free advertising. How long has that smart water been there? How long has that smart water been there? Do you know how much money I could get? Smart water sucks. Don't ever drink smart water. Garbage. Fursuits represent an original character created by their wearer and are often better fitting and more intricately crafted with features such as a moving jaw or holes. Fursuits are made in a wide range of styles from cartoonish to highly realistic. Fursuits are pretty expensive, I believe, um, you know, through my research. <laughs> um, Anywhere from on the very absolute low end, a thousand dollars up to maybe six thousand. Usually more on the higher side. Let's be honest. If you're worried about saving money, probably don't get the first suit to begin with. But if you're going to get the first suit, I would say go for the higher end one. Commission the higher end one. So the question is, how do you get to the fursona? I think that a fursona should, first and foremost, be just a vehicle for the person to 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 just explore whatever they want. Uh, more importantly, like whether it's for pleasure or something more casual, um, it, it's just about having a fun experience. Might I suggest, and, and that is I believe that there's a balance. I believe that in crafting your persona, you should consider what you want and also what you are. It's clear what what you want obviously means. What, what do you want it to look like? What do you want the colors to be like? What do you want your story to be like? But what you are is kind of what we're gonna be focusing on in this lecture. Like your physicality, what animal you kind of look like. What you are branches off to two more branches of being physical and spiritual. What do I mean by that? Again, physical kind of you know explains itself, but spiritual is more like your vibes, your personality, your, your mentality, your physical and spiritual aura kind of aligns with some animals more than others. But again, I think that persona, once again, your persona should be a vehicle for your own means. So uh, you should just consider, for example, uh, the class and I collaborated last time we did our furry lecture. We decided that the rhino was my persona. Uh, a student very kindly um, commissioned this from an artist. Gallen commissioned this from Coco Line Arts. They commissioned this image of me as a rhino as my rhino fursona. And uh, I don't think that they're here, but thank you for that. That's actually very, that's very, that's very cute. That's very nice. I like that. So yes, see here. How's that? We are going to be doing a more hands-on lesson and demonstrate what we've learned today and in past lectures. We will be creating fursonas for other streamers, other content creators within the community using everything we've learned. And it's gonna be a collaborative classroom experience. So please feel free to give your input 
and helping me accomplish this. Lily Pichu. So let's take a look at this here. What would Lily Pichu's fursona be? I, yes, I see that. I see a lot of mouse, bunny, chinchilla. Let's be a little more creative than that. Let's dig a little deeper. I do get it. You want to jump to, to the obvious things, but might, might I, I'm going to say penguin. Did you didn't think about that one? Why? Because you want to say, you know, you say mouse, rabbit, small, cute, but, but, and not, and not to say Lily Pichu isn't that, but there's, there's a little, there's a little more wackiness, a little bit of a penguiny thing. We want to capture that kind of quirky, quirkiness. We start with the bill. I like, I like this. I like the over exaggerated glasses. I'm going to go with penguin. Something that's still cute, but kind of like a little quirky. Lily Pichu. More like Lily Penguin. This is Lily Pichu's fursona on a floating block of ice. In the, it's, it's melting. Uh-oh, global warming. Uh-oh, polar bear's looking. Uh-oh, polar bear's looking a little hungry. Food has been scarce. It's got its eyes set. Run, run, Lily Pichu, run. But yes, uh, Lily Pichu, we're going to go with the penguin. So next up, Tyler 1. What animal is six foot seven? What would Tyler 1 be as an animal? But might I suggest goldfish? Think about it. Hold on. I know. Think about it. Tyler 1. First of all, no one can deny that the physical, the physicality right here matches. So off the bat, we have strong physical uh, sim similarities. But think about in essence, the goldfish, despite everyone saying how lame a goldfish is, is one of the most popular type of pets in pop culture. People love goldfish. Look at magic carp, right? There's something there with the story of magic carp. Everyone looks down on the goldfish. Everyone look, oh, what a tiny goldfish. And the goldfish says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gyarados. I'm a six foot seven Gyarados. Lol, Tyler goldfish. First of all, the physical similarities, the bulbous head, and also just the spirit of wanting to be larger than you are. The tiny magic carp says, I'm the six foot seven Gyarados. Lol, Tyler Goldfish. That's what I'm gonna go for. XQC, one of the most popular streamers on this platform. Parrot, sloth, weasel. Weasel, mm, interesting. I don't know about sloth because the sloth is a little too like eased down, you know? Weasel's good. Like you guys watched the Su James Gunn's uh, Suicide Squad movie? Kind of reminds me of the weasel in that. I'm getting like a, like an avian. Me personally, I feel like an ostrich, very gangly, kind of scary, unhinged bird type, you know, kind of, because an ostrich is not like a cute bird. It's like, it's like, uh, and you're like, oh God, what the, f you know, like, uh, ostrich, oh. Uh. XQC, ostrich. XQC, ostrich. XQ ostrich. I think we hit something with this one. Come on. XQC is definitely the ostrich. Tyler Ninja Blevins. I'm seeing a lot of skunks. Listen, don't let the blue hue of his brand, of his hair get to you. Listen, you're saying peacock. I don't know. I don't know. A peacock, you know, you imagine very, very pristine, very regal, very prissy and beautiful. I don't know if that's Tyler Ninja Blevins. Meerkat. I feel like, mm, ah, yes, but, but I feel Meerkat could be literally any male streamer on this platform. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel Meerkat could have been XQC. You guys are just, you guys are just tossing out the worst. He's a weasel. He's a possum. Ah. Someone is saying, <laughs> I, I'm seeing someone spam poison dart frog. It is blue. Is he toxic? Is that what you're saying? Here we go. Ninja, I think we've agreed, is a poison dart frog, would be Ninja's persona. See him here with the iconic, and you know, we don't have color, but it would be, it would be blue, iconic here with the headband. And see, he's sweating, he's nervous because he's not seeing enough movement at the New York uh, New Year's bash when he's trying to set the world record for most people flossing. Do we know who Ludwig is? This one might be hard. A fennec fox. Like one of those sand cats, you know? 
Oh, hold on. Hold on here. Hold on here. Ludwig Fennec Fox. Yes, I will say a little, a little dainty, but something like this, I think we're going with the sand cat. Definitely, maybe we could have chosen a better sand cat, but I think for sake of argument, we can say like generally a sand cat. The more I look at it, the more I like it. Yes, he does kind of have that feline snarkiness, but not the traditional like house cat cuteness. I'm quite proud of this one. Um, one of my favorite streamers, uh, Jerma. Why is everyone saying platypus? Angler fish, moray eel. I don't know. Uh, well, well, well. Ah, ah. Holy crap. Germa, rat. Germa, rat. I think rat. Yeah, I like rat because it's kind of like unhinged, but not in like a really overtly scary way. Oh my god. I think we've outdone ourselves. Germa rat. It's got the it's got the vibes. It works. It works. Wow. Wow. Yes, the kind of like kind of unhinged, but not like overtly scary. Not like you're in, not like you feel in danger, but definitely like, uh, like a, like a, a eek, eek kind of thing, you know? Uh-huh, I like that one. Uh, moist critical, straight off the bat. I think we got it. You say walrus and wow, does that like just, it really uh, sticks out to me already. Sloth, no, no. I don't think a sloth. No, a sloth like doesn't care and is slow. Like, Moist Critical, yes, he might have a sort of laggard type. It might come off that way, but no, like, Moist Critical is too passionate. He cares too much. It's too, like, there to be a sloth. It's the face. It's the mouth. Let me explain why Moist Critical is a walrus, right? You know, besides the physical look, like the mouth, the kind of elongated, like, it, it definitely is walrusy. But let me explain why it's not a sloth. Because like I said, Moist Critical, he, he cares too much. A sloth is like, you know, again, I think you say sloth because Morris Critical kind of comes off like maybe a little, you know, slow and like sloth-like, but, but I don't think he's a sloth because he's too passionate. He cares too much about the subject, but I do get across what you're talking about. Kind of the deep voice makes you kind of want to think they're like, you know, kind of like on the slow side. But that's why it's the walrus because the walrus is kind of more of like this like, Kind of whatever, but it will it will it will eat you. It will like rip apart the penguin, like Argh! you know. It's a savage when it wants to be. It cares. It's it's passionate. I think moist critical as a walrus is a good one. This one might be too easy, but let, let's do a little thought experiment here. Bow VTuber. Bow's fursona. I mean, it, it's too easy. It's a whale. So this is what I think Bow's fursona would look like. Uh, this is this is the giant squid that Bao just defeated in battle. But yeah, there's Bao as a as a whale. It'd be kind of like that. Can sea creatures really be furries? I mean, I think we answered that. I think the answer is yes. Markiplier, a tiger. Interesting. Lion. I I do see a lion. Markiplier does have like the the spiritualness of a golden retriever, but you can't ignore the physical aspects of it. Is this Markiplier? He's looking a little dilfy nowadays, huh? Sheesh. You know, he does have like, you know, the kind of resounding like Markiplier here. It very like, like the lion from Zootopia. Okay, okay, we got something. We got, hold on, hold on. Hello? We're gonna go with a lion persona. Asmongold. Let's see beaver. Why beaver? Is that, is it because of the teeth? Oh, wait. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go with a beaver. He, uh, he looks like a homeless man, so that means I did a good job, right? Pokimane. I feel like Pokimane's persona would definitely be like, like a chipmunk or something. Or yes, like a sugar glider, right? I don't think the sugar glider, it's cute, but I don't think it's beautiful enough. I don't want to say baby face, but like the, the chipmunk cheeks, kind of, like the mouth and the chipmunk cheeks, I think it's like the dimples. This one's going to be hard because Pokemon is like a pretty girl. You know, we do something like Tim the Tatman and Asmongold and it's easy. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, clearly you're going to, you know, 
you know, you're like, ah, look at Tim, look at his pink skin, his, his big round head, or like, ah, look at Asmongold, he's got that thing going on with, like, the thing. But, like, I can't do it. <laughs> he doesn't have, like, like a grotesquely over-exaggerated... It's like, if you took all the world's prettiest people and combined it into, like, the most generic pretty person image, that's like what Pokimane is. Like, she doesn't have like a big nose or like this, she's not like balding or like, we went for a squirrel. Pokimane's persona, yeah, Max Mofo. He's kind of got this unhinged Sweeney Todd kind of thing going on. You know, that's a possum if I've ever seen it, maybe. Marmoset. What? Well, oh, kinda. I see what you're saying. It, it does look like him actually. <laughs> okay, okay, so we're gonna go with a marmoset. So that's a marmoset and that's that's Max Mofo and and this right here is Max Pogging out to pulling some kind of Charizard card or something mm -hmm.